very good afternoon to you, our cherished and discerning listeners. We here at Multimedia Enjoy Business welcome you to yet another exciting edition of your favorite business development program on Radio Masterclass. Whenever it's Wednesday, I'm excited because we are going to get the opportunity to share time together. Did you know that in the year 2020, yes, in the year of COVID, in the year of lockdowns, up to about 80% of firms across the world, an average of about 80%, experienced cyber attacks in their operation. Did you also know that up to about 95% of these cyber attacks or breaches were as a result of human error? And even more so, did you know that every 39 seconds in the year 2020, there was a cyber attack attempt? The answers to all of these questions and more coming up on Masterclass right here on your Superstation Joy 99.7. Masterclass today is powered by Joy Business and brought to us by Goyle. Goyle, they say good energy, Goyle, Yenara, Yedia. Masterclass is also brought to us by First Code Management Services. They say industry, get it right. And again, Masterclass today is brought to us by Lancaster University. They pride themselves to be one of the only British university campuses in West Africa. By all means, if you want to get your university education, do consider Lancaster University in that conversation. My name, as always, is Yavana Fo, and I will be your host for today's conversation. And so if you joined us on Masterclass last week, we started a certain conversation on cybersecurity and the business value of it. Last week, we spent time with Mr. Nijan of Inovari, and he shared some thoughts with us. His focus essentially was on the first line of defense in dealing with cyber crime, cyber security, essentially looking at the attitude of employees, attitude of staff. Today, we continue that conversation again with a resource from Innovari. By this time, we're privileged to be joined in the studio by the CEO of Innovari. I'll be introducing him a bit more shortly, but his conversation essentially today will be looking at the commitment of management, the commitment of management in fighting cybercrime or fi um, enhancing the argument on cyber security. Last week, you looked at the staff as a line of defense. Today, we're looking at management activity or management action and how that can help the process. And so today we are obliged, um, we're happy to be joined by Mr. C.K. Bruce, um, who is a CEO of Innovari, as I mentioned. From 2006 to 2014, he was also the president of the Information Systems Audit and Control Association. Quite a mouthful there, but in short, it's known as ISACA. For those who are in the IT and information security field, you will know about ISACA, the Accra, chat the Accra chapter. He was a president from 2006 to 2014. He got his education from Oxford Brookes University, Oxford United Kingdom, where he majored in information systems. And today he'll be sharing some time with us. He has over 20 years of exper experience in information security, and therefore you are in good hands in this conversation today as we go into it. Good afternoon. I call you CK. Yes, please. Definitely. Good afternoon, CK. You're welcome Hi. to today's conversation. Hi, yeah. How are you? Very well, thank you. Very well, thank you. Fantastic. I mean, like I said to Mr. Jan um, last week when we had this conversation, whenever we talk about information security and firms, a few terminologies sort of come up in our mind. We hear um, Trojan horses. We hear viruses, um, not coronavirus. But <laughs> <laughs> viruses, you know. Um, we hear fishing. We hear shoulder surfing. We hear tailgating. There are a few of those terminologies that, you know, Today, again, we, we, we tried to talk about them last week a bit, yeah. but today, if we have a bit of time, again, we, sure. can, we can also sort of go into it. But today, we're, we're going to be looking at the management commitment yes. to helping with this process. Just to remind our listeners also that we're streaming live on Facebook, and we'll be sharing some slides as well. So if you're one who likes to take notes as well, by all means, do take your pen and pencils. If you're driving, you can just listen to us and then follow, follow our slides on Facebook as well. Siki. Let's enter into that conversation, if you will, about the role of um, management in, in fighting um, cybercrime, if you like. Yeah, sure. Okay, thank you so much, Yao. Thank you, and uh, 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 thank you to all your listeners who have tuned in. Well, basically, when we say management commitment, we are implying the direct participation of the highest level of management of a corporate organization in the development of a specific uh, endeavor, a specific area within the organization. And in this context, we're talking about information security or cyber security, okay? Uh, uh, sometimes there's this 
uh, uh, misunderstanding about information security and cyber security. I think I, ne I need to put it into proper perspective. Please do. Please do. Cyber security is a subset of information security. Okay. We put it all together. We don't know the yes, difference. Yes, <laughs> I know. You see, cyber security is looking at the threats that emanate from the internet. Okay, information security is the holistic perspective of protecting information and information assets within an organization. Mm -hmm. So cybersecurity is an is a is a subset. However, uh, I hope we can agree that we will use it interchangeably, and it means the same thing. Okay, so uh, management commitment is we are looking at management and ensuring that they are they are they are they are directly involved in the creation of the structures, in creation of the processes, and in creation of the policies that would ensure that uh, information security is ingrained within the organization. Now, you may ask that why is it important, okay? Now, as you, as you rightly said, last week, uh, uh, Nijan was speaking about the employees. The employees need guidance. Mm. They need leadership. They need to see that uh, they are, I mean, the, the leaders of the organization are doing the right things, the right behaviors, which will ensure a proper, secure working environment. Okay, so we need to be able to be confident that the things that need to be done are being done in a way and manner which has been prescribed. Okay, mm. now, the emphasis is on behavior. And last week, uh, Nijan was talking about the behavior of employees and, you know, how we, I mean, the, we view uh, the people as the first line of defense. One may ask that, why is that? We are talking about information security and why is the people the first line of defense? Mm -hmm. Now, that comes about when we need to understand the nature of the information security problem, okay? A lot of people think that the information security problem is a technical problem. It is not. It is definitely not a, a technical problem. It's a social problem, a people problem, okay? Now, if an organization sees it as a technical problem, they will look for a technical solution and then they will obviously lose business value. Okay, it's a people problem. Okay, mm. the technology is there. It's the people who misuse it. Okay, it's not a technology that gets up and does things. Okay, yes, there's, a, there's the avenue of where we say the technology has vulnerabilities and all that. Yes, yes, I mean, yes, I agree that the, the technology, but again, it is a human being who would exploit those vulnerabilities. Okay, so we need to f have a people-centered solution to a people problem. Mm. That's why, uh, you know, management, management consists of people, of, obviously. The behavior of management becomes critical, you know, becomes very uh, essential to provide the right leadership, to provide the right uh, behavioral model that we can follow. Okay. And, you know, as, as, I just wanted to chip this in very sure. quickly. When you say it's a people pro problem, I agree so much because data capture somewhat still involves human intervention. 100%. And data use or data breach, we just said about 95% of breaches being due yes. to human error. Yes. So I think we'll expand a bit more on that, yes. but I just wanted yes. to drive that yes. point home. Yes. yes. That yes. it's yes. a people problem, yes. not necessarily just a tech problem. Exactly. But a people problem. You know, so even if you look at data entry, it's a human being who might make a mistake in entering data, yep. not, I mean, not the technology, you've developed the software, everything is there. Masa, just enter the data. Mm. And then, you know, some, 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 I mean, some things become, become, <laughs> become between, funny. Between when you capture and when you commit, <laughs> something happens. To something data. happens. Right. Okay. So what are some of the key responsibilities of, of, uh, of management in this context? Mm. Okay. Now we, 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 we are looking at, uh, management to ensure alignment of the information security strategy and the organizational strategy. Mm. Let me expand on that. Okay, now, 
if we do not understand how and why and the focus of the business of the organization, mm -hmm. we might get information security wrong. And information security might actually create barriers to uh, uh, attaining organizational objectives. Mm -hmm. For example, social media. Social media is a very easy attack vector. When we say attack vector, attack, an attack vector is the, is the uh, point that enables a hacker or enables any uh, a malicious person to take advantage of the, of the information systems of an organization. Okay. So social media affords a lot of opportunity for uh, people to put clickable links and things like that. Mm. Okay. So on the face of it, you would want to not allow social media. However, social media is an excellent business marketing sales tool. You cannot do without it. This day and age, I don't think there's any company who can say that they would not want to be where the customers are, mm. where, they are where their target market is. They are on social media. So wh wh why are you not there? Okay. Now, social media, unfortunately, has the propensity to uh, affect your brand, your, your reputation by somebody's comment. Mm. Are you there to defend yourself? Yes or no? I don't know. Mm -hmm. So it means that as an organization, we cannot afford not to be on social media. Mm -hmm. This means that your information security team shouldn't come up and say that we are blocking social media, mm -hmm. that, okay, it's dangerous. No, their focus should be that how can we use social media in a secure manner to mit mitigate the risks mm -hmm. and allow the you know the business that we want to do the marketing that we want to do to go ahead to leverage on the opportunities to that leverage. lie there you know exactly also. Yeah. exactly so the 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 perspective of the information security strategy mm -hmm. should be reduce the risk mm -hmm. let the business development team let the communications team use social media mm -hmm. but let's mitigate the risks okay right. so that's what i mean by the alignment of the information security strategy to the business strategy. Mm -hmm. Again, to create business value, okay? We are leveraging on, 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 on security here mm -hmm. to create business value, okay? We also need to ensure, management needs to ensure that the objectives that are established are followed through, mm -hmm. okay? So information security objectives would be based on the requirements the needs of the organization. Okay, we need to we need to be clear about what we need. Okay, so for example, uh, uh, organizations in the banking sector, for instance, are being chased with regulatory requirements. That would be an objective. So management will be telling uh, information security team, make sure we are compliant. Okay. Let's give that compliance, you know, mm -hmm. some priority. Exactly. Okay, so that is an objective set by the top hierarchy of the organization. Okay, we need to ensure that we are managing and mitigating business risks. Okay, now the other aspect of the business risks are that the fact that these business risks. Are, are underlined by technology. So from a, a, the IT department perspective, they are looking at the technology. From the business, uh, business unit perspective, they are looking at the business, okay? We need to align that so that we can, we can understand the nature of the business risk in alignment to the technology risk so that management would be uh, proactive in looking at the technology as well, okay? You tell me a, 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 a server is down, and so what, okay? We need to understand that that server is running a critical process, is running a billing, billing uh, application, for instance. If in any organization your billing is not working, that is your revenue going down the drain. 
Okay, yeah. so we need to understand the business risk, and that needs to be understood and articulated by management. Okay, then we need to establish the proper governance structures. Governance structures, one of the key uh, components of governance structures is the policy documents, mm. okay? Uh, we need to ensure that we have the right policy documents that are being used, that are being uh, adopted, that are being understood, you know, by, the, by that first line of defense, okay? Uh, if we see management usurping policies, what will happen? Nobody is going to do it, okay? Nice. Management has to provide the leadership in uh, 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 complying and adopting those policies. Okay. It, it, it's, it's interesting that you mentioned that, and for business owners, it's absolutely important that the example leads the way. I mean, I mentioned this last week that, I, I, you know, on a certain show, I listened to a resource person say, the best way to teach a child, and the child here is in quote, yes. your employee, yes. somebody you are superintending over. Yeah. Number one is by example, number two is by example, and number three is by example. So we should begin to move away from the old, you know, parlance which says that do as I say and not as I do. I do. Now you are teaching them strongly, not only by somebody said your actions are speaking so loudly. I can't hear what you are saying. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> you know. Yes. So I just wanted yes. to drive home that yes. point that yes. be yes. the yes. example that you wish to see. Yes. As a business yes. owner, yes. as an entrepreneur, yes. as a leader, yes. be the example yes. that you yes. wish to see. Yes. Yeah. Yes. And. I mean, I can give another example of uh, uh, one of our clients, the CEO of, of, a, of, a, of a fintech, you know. And uh, uh, it was simply the door to where the developers were. And obviously, with, with, the, with the new, uh, uh, you know, security policies being implemented, that door had, had to be closed, mm -hmm. okay? Obviously, the uh, team had been used to having it open for so many years, okay? Open door policy. Open door. <laughs> Open door, okay? <laughs> uh, right now, we have secure areas, so that door can no longer be opened, okay? So what the CEO did was to put a bowl by the door. Mm -hmm. If you left the door open, you're putting in five CDs. Mm. At the end of the month, the money is used to buy pizza, and mm -hmm. everybody will eat except the people who contributed to, <laughs> to, 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 to putting the money in, okay? This, to me, is solid management commitment, mm. Okay, because this is the CEO who is ensuring that, hey, I, I, you didn't close the door. Put five, five CDs in. Okay. The bowl lasted for two months. And After the, that, there was no need for the bowl. It was anymore. compliant. It was compliant. Straight. You see. So that shows that the, you know, the uh, 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 top hierarchy mm. is fully, you know, involved. Okay. Another example. There was also another CEO who... Uh, in the awareness quiz, he was the quiz master. Mm. If you like, don't be there. Mm. Okay. If you like, don't be active. Mm -hmm. Okay. And it sinks down mm. that this is an important subject, an important thing that we need to achieve mm. as an organization. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, you know, it, it, it just shows that we, we, the management is driving mm. the change mm. that needs to be done. Just a quick addition to that. You know, I find that today in many um, corporate environments, because management is now aware that they have to show leadership and show commitment, beyond the use of policy, beyond the use of documentation, the use of sanction, now there's a lot more awareness also. And so the same way you have to change your password every month or every two months, yeah. now there is a sort of engagement process that takes place every so often and it's either in your emails a test you need to do is a button you need to click on or something that if you do something long enough at some point it stays in your subconscious and Precisely. so that's i just wanted yes. to, to touch yes. a bit more Precisely. on how we can use you see constant awareness yeah to sort of help that process also. let me let, uh, 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 let me differentiate mm. between a regimental environment and a business environment mm. a regimental environment I'm, 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 I'm talking about the security services, right. you know. In that, in that environment, you are told to do something, mm -hmm. and they have been indoctrinated to, to, to do it without question. Mm. You cannot have that environment in a business, in a corporate environment, okay? It, 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 it simply will not work. Mm. So in a corporate environment, there must be that, co uh, you know, uh, 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 cajoling, you know, convincing, 
you know, uh, direct engagement, as you said. Helping them to do it Help because it. they exactly. understand it. Exactly. Not because they must do it. Exactly. Exactly. So if they understand the underlying risks, have a better uh, uh, awareness of the underlying risk, we are more likely to have better better, better compliance. So, and that is important. So it's a bit more like the carrot and the stick approach. I mean, I'm familiar, and again, this may be on the extreme side of the, of the divide, but I'm familiar with the institutions companies yeah. which are pushing so hard on this awareness thing number one because of regulation number two because the risk is real the biggest existential threat out there is cyber it is so because of this now they make it a lot more available to you they make they make you a lot more aware but then they also have these milestones that you must achieve yes you know and when you don't achieve them the slight sanction and then they cajole you and then you know i know situations where people have had to forfeit two weeks of the salary because they didn't do a certain test you know <laughs> The, I mean, the, the, one of the good tricks, uh, I, I don't know, they have HR managers listening. <laughs> <laughs> Be ambiguous about it. <laughs> it should include it in, in your appraisal. Exactly. There you okay. Go. It should be part of your appraisal that, you know, uh, the awareness topics, there could be some quizzes. You have to perform a certain level of of it and to, it's not, it to reflect. And it's not that you just go there and click click click. You yes. must spend time. You must spend so, time. And there are, and there are, there are parameters that can you know ensure you do that. Exactly. So you must watch the video. The video is ten minutes. Exactly. You must watch it before it progresses yes. to the, the exactly. quiz section exactly. and all of that. If exactly. people do it long enough as part exactly. of the management approach, exactly. then yeah. you can begin to expect that it's exactly. in the subconscious. Exactly. And when they're crossing that line, they'll say, Ah, it says before you cross the line, jump three times. They don't have to remember it. It's there. Precisely. The precisely. So these are things that management has to lead on. Mm. Okay. Management has to drive. Okay. Uh, the other thing as well that management has to do as part of their responsibility is to resource the program. Mm. Okay. Uh, you know, the difficulty around this is that information security does not directly create revenue does not so obviously it will not be the you know the focus of management my finance people will say it's a cost center <laughs> exactly <laughs> exactly that is the perspective however it can give business value exactly. but you need to know how to derive that business value mm. you know uh, uh I, I, I was i was i will be speaking a little bit later about it governance practices mm. okay but there are mechanisms there are uh, processes to ensure that you get value from this mm. uh, expenditure and that perspective must be understood by management mm. okay and then the final responsibility mm. is about the culture the behavior okay changing the culture of the organization so that the behavior of the employees are in the right direction mm. okay now, again, we all know that uh, to affect an organizational culture, you need to start from the top, okay? You need, it, it, it has to begin from the top. Mm -hmm. You can't expect management to have a certain behavior and then the rest of the staff have a certain behavior. Mm -hmm. It just won't work, okay? And information security is a, inf uh, implementing information security processes and, pol and policies is a change project because of the fact that the focus is on the people okay so that's what i'm saying at the at the beginning that if you are if you see it as a technology problem you will seek a technology solution and then you're off okay it's a people problem so seek a people uh, uh, oriented solution, solution and the only thing is to ensure behavior Okay, so that is what makes the awareness program critical. Okay, an awareness program, the objective of an awareness program is to change behavior. It's not to create awareness, in quotes. It's to uh, uh, result in behavioral change. Okay, so that focus, that understanding also must, must be there. And again, if management is involved then the the I mean the chances of that happening is 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 high, okay. So just some last few points. Mm. 
about uh, the type of the characteristics of the organization that we're looking for. Okay. Before you go into that, those those points, I, I want to give our listeners the opportunity to also get interactive so that we sure. continue to speak while we wait for the calls to sure. come. Then we just want to take a quick message from our sponsors. When we come back, we get interactive and then we keep talking and then we open the phone lines as sure. well. So we'll go have a quick commercial break. We'll be right back. <laughs> Your favorite on-air business development program, Joy Business Masterclass, is in session. And you can interact with us on Facebook via the Joy 99.7 FM or Joy Business pages. If you tweet, the handle is at Joy 997 FM or at Joy Business GH. Don't forget to hashtag JB Masterclass. You can also call us on 0302-216541 or send your questions and contributions through to the WhatsApp number 551 111997 and our facilitators will address your concerns. Attention everyone, class is in progress. Welcome back. If you've just tuned in, this is Masterclass here on your Superstation. And we're spending time here with Mr. C.K. Bruce of Innovari. And we're talking about how management impact can help us deal with the issue of cybercrime or enhance cybersecurity. The phone lines are now open. Numbers to call 0302-216-541. That's 0302-216-541. You can also send us your comments on 55 Nine nine seven. That's zero five five one 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 nine nine seven. Pick up that phone. Give us a call. Zero three zero two two one six five four one. We want to hear your thoughts. What is the situation in your company that you're running, or that you own, or that you work in? What are the cyber security introductions that have been done? How is it helping your situation? Let's hear your story. We always say that life is too short to make all the mistakes yourself. So let's learn from other people's mistakes as well. We continue this conversation, but phone lines are now open. You can give us that call, 0302-216-541. See, you were, you were making that point earlier before we went on that, on that commercial break. And something that comes to my mind is, again, a statement I had, you know, a manage, one of those management statements that, you cannot expect what you do not inspect. Yes. So for me, I tie that yes. strongly to, number one, being the example. Yes. And helping your staff to understand or your team to understand why yes. it must be done. Yes. But beyond that, you must follow up. Yes. Otherwise, it doesn't get done. Exactly. Yes. So exactly. let's talk about that and then connect it exactly. to the point you are about exactly. to make before exactly. we... You know, <clears throat> I, I, I always say that, well, the expectation is that information security should be on the agenda as high as board, mm. okay? It must be on board agenda. Mm. Simply because when board asks certain questions, it elicits a lot of activity. Mm -hmm. And that's where, you rightly said, the, the, the inspect, okay? So, I mean, a board member can ask, so this is our antivirus, how's it doing? That would elicit a lot of giddy, giddy, giddy to ensure that we can give because the a board positive report. Because the board is asking. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, so we need the board to ask these questions, yeah. okay? We need the board to be, to be interested. And that is all that, you know, the, 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 the management commitment is all about. And where you don't have a board, we need as high as possible in the organization, the management, precisely, the owner, precisely. the majority shareholder, precisely. whoever it is who calls yes. the shots yes. must be interested. Yes. They must understand it. Yes. They must be interested in it. Then they can drive it. You know, I think one of the key takeaways... That, that anybody needs to, uh, needs to absorb is the fact that it is not a techn technology problem. Mm. So, mm. I, mean, I, I mean, as I've, 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 I've said, and I would like to reiterate, if you see it as a technology problem, you will seek a technology solution. Mm -hmm. And that's the problem. And that, right. at once, you're off. So whether you are, you know, sole proprietor, you know, single owner, you need to think of it that, look, it, this is a people problem, mm -hmm. not, not the technology you to look at and also because ai hasn't taken over yet we're still here yes oh very much <laughs> and ai underneath is technology exactly. anyway yes yes exactly yes so some of the last points you know just to understand the characteristics that you know we you know we can look for that can uh, make us feel comfortable because another aspect that we need to uh, uh you know take in I would want to do business with a organization that is that is serious about their business. And if you're serious about information security, then you are serious about your business. Because if you don't realize, 
a simple ransomware attack can bring down your organization. Exactly. There are so many aspects of cyber attacks that can bring down your organization. So if you want to protect that investment, then you know, invest something small into into you know into 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 putting the right things in place to ensure that you are secure. Okay. So first thing, uh, I think we've we've uh, we've hacked this point that the uh, management lead from the top okay create the right culture you can only create the right culture if the behavior mindset of management is you know is is is, is, is in the right place yeah. is in the right place okay number 2 the use of risk management mm. okay uh, uh maybe at another time we can differentiate risk management from from cybersecurity, mm. okay. But the bottom line is that management makes decisions. Those decisions must be based on risk management, mm. must be based on risk assessment, okay. So you don't make decisions on the fly, okay. Get, get some assessment done before mm. you make a decision, mm -hmm. okay. It doesn't have to be, uh, 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 you know, a, a very elaborate, uh, formula rich uh, you know you know you know risk analysis no I mean it, it could it, it could be very very simple but it should be based on data it should be based on data <laughs> Someone would say, don't make yeah. decisions yes. by heart. Yeah, by heart. <laughs> <laughs> it should be based on data yeah. you know empirical data exactly okay so it's and so once we have what we call a risk aware or risk oriented organization it is some organization that you would want to do business with mm. Okay, and then uh, I mentioned IT governance, that we, uh, you should use IT governance principles in managing your know, information security. Now, the, the key IT governance principles that I want to talk about is the fact that we need to l stop looking at IT expenditure as a cost center, which you mentioned earlier, okay? It is not a cost center, you can see the return on investment of any IT expenditure, mm. okay? It's just that you need to have the right processes in place. Those processes can be also be applied to information security expenditure, okay? So things like having a business, proper business case when you are making expenditure, things like, uh, you know, uh, uh, direct savings, areas of savings, you can, you can identify all these when you're making the decision so that you can track it and you can ensure that those benefits that you've identified actually come to be true okay so with these three areas once you know as an organization mm. uh, uh, we can we can we can focus on doing all these things I think uh, we will go a long way. We'll be in, in a better in place. Trying. Yes, much, much better right. place. Just to remind our listeners, the phone lines are open. We're interactive. You can pick up that phone. Give us a call, 302 That's 302 You can send us your comments or your questions on 055 What is the situation of cyber um, security in your company where you work? What are the policies that exist? Are you allowed to do every and anything? Are there any restrictions towards helping the process become better? Pick up that phone, give us a call. Let's share thoughts on 0302216541. CK, at the beginning of this conversation, you did make a point about um, cybersecurity um, being a subset of information yes. um, security. Yeah. Is there today a part of the information security process which is not necessarily cyber? And can you just share a few thoughts on oh, that? Oh, yes. And when I say that, when you walk into, yes. um, when I walk into your office, not yes. everything is stored on your computer. Exactly. There are files lying exactly. on your computer. Yes, There's yes exactly. People, people can read upside down. Exactly. People walk into your office and they're talking to you and they're looking at exactly. something on your desk. Exactly. How do we conduct ourselves as employees in the workplace on keeping security on the parts of our data and documentation that is not necessarily within the cyber space? Yes, exactly. I mean, information security covers information in every form not only electronic mm -hmm. okay so even if even if you don't have uh, uh i mean you will be the only one in the world if you don't have any it infrastructure mm -hmm. you don't use it you have information mm -hmm. okay now we recognize the ubiquity of 
cameras, mm. for instance. Every, every, nearly every phone has a, has a camera, okay? I can walk into your office and just take pictures of your documents and walk away, yeah. okay? So one of the policies, one of the policy areas, uh, you know, advised as part of your information security uh, management system is a clear DEX policy. Mm. So at the end of the day, before you leave, clear your desk of all work working papers. Don't leave okay. important stuff lying all Don't over. Exactly. This has nothing to do with technology. This is just your information. Attitude now. Yes, exactly. Exactly. You know, behavior. Th there's also another aspect of information security I want you to talk about. Talking about company information or sensitive information in public places. You're in public transport and somebody's talking about the consignment is coming. The container is at the port. So the documents, yes. So when you go and they're, mess they're flying names, and sometimes phone numbers, 024, and they are in public transport. Sometimes they're in a restaurant. How is that a breach of information security? Share some thoughts on that. Because you we see, do that without even realizing yes, it. Yes, yes. You see, one, one thing that might help, I mean, this sometimes is done inadvertently. Mm. You know, you, you, I mean, uh, well, again, out of lack of awareness of these things that can happen. And the fact that uh, the social engineers, a social, a social engineer is somebody who cons you to extract information from you. Okay. Let me share something with you very quickly, and I won't go too much into detail. So someone walks to a mobile money vendor and is trying to move some money, and in the process they mention their phone number. There's someone standing by who was going to enjoy the service. They says, oh, go ahead, go ahead of me. Now, long story short, they pick up some of the details that this person is sharing, and they disappear. Yes. Within minutes, that transfer, I don't know how it's done in the background, but the money starts moving from the person's account. Where did they get the information? You were talking too loudly talking on top of your voice at the exactly. vendors. Yes. And I just wanted to add yes. that to what you yes. are saying. Yes. No, I mean, we need to be aware of the information that we are giving out. I mean, we can, we can, I, uh, I know we are talking the manual, so maybe mm. we, can, we can translate that to Facebook, for instance. Mm. The amount of information we put on Facebook. Facebook, Facebook social media, say it you again. Know, it's, so, it's so much. I, and I'm and awake. <laughs> I'm going to have a bath. <laughs> No, the worst one <laughs> is this, uh, 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 in fact, I don't use Facebook, so I can't remember. That location, that, you know, check-in. Right. You know, I am here. Yes, so if you are here, you are not at home, <laughs> obviously. <laughs> you know? You and know? It's, it's dangerous. If, if someone is looking for you, they can easily... Precisely. Uh, these days, interviews are done not when you walk into the room. Yes, yes. They are done before you walk in there because you are... Have you ever tried to Google your name? Oh, yeah, uh, lots of times. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. You'll be amazed about the information. I'm telling you. Well, but it's also revealing, so you so that you can know if there's any negativity mm. around around you. Mm. Okay, so that you you would you would you would know. So how let's to react. let's conclude on that point. What should people do when they're in public places when they're talking about sensitive stuff? I mean, this is behavior. You should not do it. You should be aware of the information that you're that you're letting out. Mm. You should you should be aware. I mean, I was going to be a little bit a little bit more technical and mm. say that. You know, we classify information, mm -hmm. but I think that is, I mean, that is too, uh, too. I mean, too complex mm. for. Just don't reveal information. Mm -hmm. Try as much as possible to. I mean, to be okay. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, I'm in public transport. I'll call you back mm -hmm. later, and then we can continue. Okay. Sometimes I don't understand why people pick all calls that come. Exactly. You see, and it depends on where you are. You can return some of the calls. You, you don't need to pick. And if you think no one is listening, you you remember the times when you you are in public transport and then let's say you are at let's say somewhere on the Spintex Road, I won't use any location, yeah. and then you're heading towards the Tepashi, and then you say, obviously the person on the other side says, "Where are you?" He says, <laughs> "I'm at Tetekwashi," and everybody turns to look at you. <laughs> Let's look at it like because they're listening. So even yes. when you think they're not listening, so be careful Everybody, with the information. Yes, exactly. um, quick question before we sort of end up sure. here: How can information security cease to be an enabler and become a restrictor, if you like, in a business environment? Well, that's a very good question, yeah. and, and and I'm happy for that question. Mm -hmm. You see, so when you do not consider what you are using technology for in the first place, okay? So there's there's the other approach of the bottom up. Mm -hmm looking at the technology. So when you look at the technology alone, without taking into consideration what you do what, and what your business objectives are, then it could become a barrier, mm. okay? Mm. It, I mean, I've had, I've had that concern from some uh, IT uh, 
companies, developers, who are concerned that information security uh, processes and structures might be a barrier to innovation. And I tell them, no, it cannot happen. Yeah. You need to understand your business, okay? To focus on the risks to your business mm. and focus on the risks, you see. So if it's set up well, it will not be a barrier. And, mm. and as I said, if you do not uh, approach information security well, then you would be losing business value. Mm. Innovari is doing some work with Joy Business. Yes, uh, on cyber are. security. Tell yes, us about yes, it. Yes, yes. Well, we there's a program on Friday. Mm. Uh, we are going to discuss uh, ways to ensure business value mm. from your uh, information security investment. You see, again, it's trying to push the narrative that this is not a technology problem. Mm. This is a social problem. Okay, and with 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 that, top executives need to understand. So the target audience is top executives to come and let's discuss. Business owners? Business owners. Anybody who, you know, uses technology for, for, for revenue generating or for, or for, or for certain, uh, you know, organizational objectives. Mm. Come and let's talk and let's understand how, as a non-technical uh, person, you can ensure that Information security is working for you. Mm. Okay. Where is this taking place? At La Beach Hotel. Okay. I think it's from 9 a.m. to 12, isn't 9 it? 9 a.m. to 12 a.m. That's okay. a half day. That's a half day. Yeah. Right. If someone needs help and they're listening to us with all of this information security, uh, people get a bit, um, should I say, cowed in when, when we talk about things that we don't understand. And so it's like, oh, that's for the IT people. That's for... Where I mean, Innovari is, is very well positioned to help in this yes, respect. Oh, I always yes, say to, to, to my listeners that there are people who are trained to do specific things. You, you can't be trained to do everything. Therefore, when you need help in a particular area, look for the people who are trained in that area and shout. My, 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 my former manager used to say, if you need help, shout. Raise your hand. I need help. Where can people get help? You know, with this whole introduction of information security, maybe they want to start from the top. They have been so, you know, focused on what they're doing. They're a technical company, they're a cash crop company, they're an export company, they're an engineering company, they're into shoes, they're into bags. That's all they've been doing, pushing the pineapples, you know, trying to juice them. But now we're talking about cybersecurity because the systems are, you know, increasing yeah. and now they're yeah. exporting and yeah. they're on Facebook everywhere. Yeah. And they want to begin to introduce the conversation of information security. Yeah. How do they start? Where do they go? Who can help them? Obviously, you can help them. So well, tell us a bit yes. about Innovari yes. well, and, uh, and what you can do to help them. Yes. Well, they can come to, they, I mean, they can find a consulting company, training company like Innovari. Uh, you know, there are, there, I, mean, there are, I mean, there are two aspects. Mm. The consulting aspect, which will help you put in some of these things to perspective. As I said, you need to properly align your business to your, your information security mm. strategy. If it's not done properly, mm. you know, you might lose value, okay? So uh, uh, that's one thing that mm. th there's, a, there's, a, there's, a, there's a proper process in trying to put that, okay? Mm. One of the standards that, would, what, that is excellent is uh, ISO 27001, mm. which is one of the, the, I mean, the things that we, that we do very, very well. Mm. Uh, there's also training to be able to uh, you know, assimilate some of these things to be able to practice it better. Okay, so yes, I mean, uh, uh, our offices is at, is at uh, Accra Digital Center, mm -hmm. or visiting our website on innovirelearning.com. Uh, people will, will, you know, will have some proper direction. What numbers to call? Uh, uh, zero two zero. Seven seven one one eight one seven okay. would be fine. If you can just take that very slowly, because I'm sure some people want to write it down. <laughs> zero two zero yes. is a simple Vodafone number. Uh, seven seven one one eight one seven. Kind of rhymes very well okay. as well. So there you go. If you need any help, information security, please call these numbers and reach out and get the help. Thirty seconds. What's our take out from today's conversation? If we remember nothing from today, what do we take away from this conversation? That it is not a technology problem. It's a people problem. A people problem. Thank you so so much. This has been a very yeah. exciting conversation. I wish we had a bit more time next week. Hopefully, we continue that conversation with Richardson. Yes, Ebo um, Richardson. who's also from from Innovari. No, Ebo Richardson right. is from uh, uh, Absa Bank. Right from Absa. Yes. Okay, he's okay. A, he's a chief chief. Uh, 
that's, chief enabling officer. That will also be super, super yeah. exciting. Today's edition uh, of Masterclass has been brought to us by Goyle. Goyle, they say good energy. Goyle, Yenara, Yedia. Also by First Code Management Services. They say industry, get it right. And also by Lancaster um, University. They boast of being one of the only British university campuses in West Africa. Thank you so much for listening to us. Up next, we continue with The Ignition with Sami Forsen. This has been Masterclass. We come your way again, same time next week. Thank you.